So what are we having for lunch today? <laughs> hey haters, y'all can suck my <laughs> Don't mind the girl to my right, your left. But we out here making our signs just to show solidarity. My Chicago homies, you know how it is. You throw hands. <laughs> We're cutting We that throw out. hands out here. <laughs> this she most of her will be cut out. Real talk though, what what we're meaning to do is we just wanted to go out and show solidarity and uh, show up to protest. Here's the thing, here's the tea. I, Sunshine's been practicing like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> Come on, right, that left. We've been going to Maddie Pacquiao viewing just... parties since we were in fifth grade. I'm so sorry guys, but we're really oh, about to move so No, yeah, it's just been all, the last few days it's just been so enraging and I'm just at the point where I'm like, I don't want to just be a freaking keyboard warrior. I don't want to grow up and tell my kids, I lived through the Black American Revolution well, and I <laughs> posted on social media. Okay, like to be real here, I'm literally like, I snuck away from my parents because they didn't want me to go. Um, I had to pick her up like we were in high school. <laughs> Hurry, my dad's gonna find out any second. Yeah. I mean, she's kind of cute. You looking like you made a sign before. <laughs> Here to guest star on my vlog to talk about the, the meaning of the sign. Cut to sign. The sign. The sign is this crazy bitch. <laughs> Rachel, will you please explain for the people, for the culture, the meaning behind Asians for BLM? Okay, so Asians in our society, especially in America, are known- Y'all low-key racist and you know it! We are- Not we, but like, okay, so we're a model minority. We usually don't have a voice. A lot of people stigmatize us to be very silent. And um, we also grew up in very conservative, sadly racist households where our immigrant parents raise us to think that there's a bad you know, stigma or connotation when it comes to black communities. And we are out here advocating for all of our black friends, black brothers and sisters. We love you. Um, love you. A lot of Asian American communities- <laughs> A lot of Asian American communities are not vocal about what's going on, especially with Black Lives Matter and racism in general, because we are known as the model minorities. So we're out here trying to use our voice, what little voice, big voice, whatever we may have. And yeah, how are you feeling, Russ? Subscribe to the boy, Russ. But yeah. I'm not gonna say in a way that Vegas has never seen because um, the community really banded together after the tragic October 1st shooting we had at the Route 91 festival. It's one thing to come together as a community after something like Route 91 because that's a tragic event that happened in our own city, like in our own backyard. But it's another thing to come together in protest of something that happened somewhere else, you know, on the other side of the country. And at this point, let's not get it twisted. It wasn't just about George Floyd at that point. It was just the tipping point in the black community and at this point not just the black community but for everyone we're sick of america's shit when it comes to police brutality and disproportionate killing of black people now i know y'all love to be assholes in the comments sometimes especially when it comes to racial matters this particular video is more focused on shining a light on the events that tr transpired in Las Vegas and how these events affected Las Vegas. This is a local Las Vegas center channel, right? I do just want to touch on for a second though that for anyone that doesn't understand these protests that it wasn't a protest about that, just that one isolated incident. It, yes, the George Floyd murder was a huge part of it all, but again, it was just the tipping point of a problem that has been 
long ingrained in not only the justice system, but the law enforcement system. And I'll get into Las Vegas law enforcement, how that is around here in just a little bit. Most of us agree that, that what that officer did to George Floyd was horribly wrong. There's not much disagreement on that. So yeah, back to what was happening specifically in Las Vegas. I just wanted to provide, um, I guess, an account, a witness account, as somebody who was there and who has been at a couple of these things as to what really went down. I can only speak for Saturday and another day, which I'll get to. But that first Saturday on whatever date that was, Q date, was again, probably one of the first more organized protests. It was pretty clean. Um, it happened downtown. We started over at Container Park and then did a march basically weaving throughout downtown. Uh, the turnout was really incredible. Let's just remember a few things. Uh, one, obviously protesting here in America is part of our constitutional rights. I wanna say that what I saw was a lot of accountability and looking out for each other during the protests. The, shamefully, the local headlines had been focusing a lot on the violence and destruction that would happen towards the later hours of the evening. But, you know, we started out when it was still light out. It was like six, six o'clock, 6 p.m. and marched for a few hours and most of us had gone home by around 9 p.m. The reason for that is because there ended up being a standoff with a line of police and riot gear over on Fremont Street, um, just a little bit past Container Park, going away from the Fremont East experience. But before I get into what happened at that standoff, I will say and acknowledge that uh, when this march around downtown was happening, that they actually ended up blocking some streets for us because uh, there were a lot of cars <laughs> that were getting stuck in the protests because the, there was just overflow from the sidewalks onto the street. And whenever we were told that we had to get out of the street, otherwise arrests would be made, the crowd was really good at complying. You saw an immediate shift from people in the streets to the sidewalk, so that was cool. From what I saw, there were some stray instances of people trying to throw water bottles at the police and trying to aggravate them. I'm not going to deny that, but I will say 99% of the protesters, like, you know, aggravators are like the 1%, but 99% of the protesters, it pissed them off anytime they saw behavior like that. Anytime somebody tried to throw a water bottle, everyone immediately starts yelling, so the point of that is that there's a lot of accountability and focus and determination to keep the protest peaceful that's what everybody wanted there's always some people that gotta ruin it for everyone and there's always people that are looking to discredit things that others are working towards and working for so that's extremely frustrating and irritating so then yeah at the standoff uh it's a it was a big crowd you know everyone looking out for each other demanding that it stay peaceful and then all of a sudden some people that were closer to the front of the line started warning turning around and warning everyone like hey y'all get ready get ready they're getting ready to they're getting ready to go and we're like what what what's going on and they're like you know they're ready they're getting ready to come at us and it's like you look around you're like for why the most aggressive behavior that was going on, if anything, was people chanting. And it's like, what's wrong with chanting? Unless I'm missing something, I truly don't know. I mean, but, I mean, yeah, there were water bottles, but it was usually from really far back in the crowd. But I was looking at the line of police officers. I saw one particular dude who I assume was like, the commander or whatever start to go up to every police officer in the line and whisper something to them one by one and shortly after he did that next thing you know <laughs> just starts to rush at the crowd and thrust themselves into the crowd 
and mass chaos ensued. Everyone running around everywhere. My best friend got trampled. I had to go back and get her. Thankfully, a really nice dude went back to go help her up as well. Yeah, that was kind of scary because, you know, we've been seeing how some of these other protests have been going. And even I was seeing some unexplainable police behavior that everyone was confused about. People doing absolutely nothing and then, you know, getting bum rushed at or like dragged or whatever. Thankfully, to my knowledge, there hasn't been any responses as severe as in other countries here in regards to police and protesters. You know, in other parts of the country, they're fucking beating people with batons, tear gassing them, using rubber bullets. It's unbelievable to watch. Tear gas was deployed um, the next evening at the protest on the Las Vegas Strip. I don't know. I don't, and yeah, supposedly rubber bullets as well, and it hit some of the re local reporters out here. Las Vegas Review Journal, um, one of their report, one of their reporters got arrested. So my thing was, just days after the George Floyd murder, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department Sheriff Joe Lombardo had put out a statement on Twitter, you know, saying that what happened to George Floyd was absolutely horrific and completely outside of LVMPD's protocols and procedures. And that Metro was going to be doing everything that they could to earn the community's trust every single day. Something along those lines. Here, I'll put the tweet right here. Okay, yeah? Obviously what's happening in this country and what's been happening in this country is far beyond the repair of a single tweet. Um, so the question next was, what are the detailed steps and actions and policies that are going to be put in place to back up this statement, to ensure that you're going to be getting the community's trust? Like, what strides exactly are going to be made I need to make clear that I personally don't have any disdain for LVMPD. Okay, maybe. Okay. Okay, maybe just one time. I'm really salty about this time that they hit me in a parking lot. But that got settled, so whatever. It's water under a bridge. Not the point. And I don't in any way want to minimize, discredit, or dismiss anyone else's experiences that they may have had. So me saying that i don't have a problem with our metro is completely subjective and hey that's my privilege as well it's damn sure that black people don't get the privilege to say the same thing you know i've never had i've never had any fear of being profiled for the police i see a cop and i get really scared because i don't know if my like sometimes i'm like are my stickers up to date are my license plate stickers up to date and do i have my insurance if i'm speeding my insurance in my glove box so that's the extent of my worries but it's never a fear for my life so i personally as someone who absolutely loves and adores the black community and respects them so much i want to do everything i can to be an ally and to make damn sure that we do everything we can as local citizens in the community to ensure that we never see anything like that happen in our our own backyard. So protests are meant to highlight an issue and bring to light a certain issue, right? So then the next step is once there is light on the conversation that needs to be had, then the conversation's got to be had after that. And you know, there's got to be steps to move forward and work towards a solution. I found out about this community discussion that was being organized on Facebook over at City Hall. It was a community it was advertised to be a community discussion slash peaceful protest and that's something that I was really interested in because I have a responsibility as an ally to listen to black voices and to advocate for black voices that have been continuously silenced and dismissed but at the same time it's not my duty to necessarily like speak for black voices you know as well as being a part of the process 
for change, you know? Because again, this is also our community and I care about our community. So yeah, I just really wanted to hear from some of the voices um, specifically here in Vegas on their feelings with Metro. My understanding, Metro does not have as tense of community relations as much as other cities. And um, from my understanding, they're pretty on top of their shit. Again, anyone else that could say otherwise or speak otherwise specifically to Las Vegas's Metro, feel free to share your experience or if you disagree. But Vegas police has really got to be on their game because we are such a hot spot for really big events like New Year's Eve, Golden Knights games, conventions, all that stuff. So they're a really integral part of our community, keeping Vegas like safe and fun for everyone. So I respect them for that, especially since they were on the front lines of our October 1st shooting and so many of them like sacrificed themselves. And in some tragic cases, their lives, some were hospitalized from getting bullet wounds. So like Vegas has a unique appreciation of Metro. saw that video is horrified, especially police officers, just as much as everyone else. This should have already been fixed. In 2020, we shouldn't be dealing with things that we identified as a problem in 2010. Right? So yes, we have to do better. Head cops don't keep getting put on post. So if they, if they, if they can survive termination by arbitration, then how are we protected? There's a civilian review board that you can take to your complaint to if you're not happy with Um, just a day before the event, the organizers actually announced that Metro agreed to take part in the community panel discussion. That made me want to be there even more because I, as a citizen of Las Vegas, wanted answers as to why Metro responded the way that they did at the night that I was there when it looked like everything was peaceful closer to 9 p.m they started doing what they did, you know, the whole bum rushing situation. We ha we don't have a curfew here in Vegas, unlike other places. We never have had a curfew. We're not expected to have one. And so I just could not, for the life of me, fathom, like, the reasoning for doing that. You know, in a regular citizen's mind who's just exercising their right, it just looked like they were trying to aggravate a situation. And my other thing was, you know, if you're gonna do that, then at least give some sort of warning, like multiple warnings at that, but I didn't hear any warnings. Maybe it was because of the chanting or whatever, but I knew I wanted to go to this discussion because as a community member, I wanted answers. Um, so my question is regarding the, the use of tear gas, rubber bullets, and then just aggressive force without warning. What's the explanation for that? I was at the Saturday protest and then I just saw reports and video of the Sunday protest on the strip. And so, um, you know, I'm sure that there's all reasoning for that, but is there an explanation as to why there's not really a verbal warning before any of that happens? So, so we've tried to give verbal warnings. What we do is you give an order to disperse and say, because of something that's happened, usually a, a rocks or bottles or, or, or looting or something that's happened, we're gonna say that this peaceful, cross, this peaceful protest is now an unlawful assembly. You have 15 minutes to, to leave. We give that three times over 40, so for 45 minutes, right? And then at the end of that, we say, if you do not disperse, you will be uh, tear gassed and you will go to jail if we catch you. So yeah, man, TLDR, black people have been done dirty for hundreds and hundreds of years. There's still so much work left to do, but I will say I am proud to be living in Las Vegas in these times. And I'm proud to be part of a city that welcomes change and improvements. And, you know, 
not just talk about improving, but actually making the strides to do so. This is a place where the work speaks for itself. It's currently the perfect size to where it's obviously not a small town, but it's definitely a very small city. Its size gives it a unique agility when it comes to implementation. I really hope that the community and Metro can continue putting in the hard work on both ends to have accountability, transparency, and positive changes for the community. To my black brothers and sisters, know that you have an ally out here in me and that there's a lot of us out here that are on your side and showing up and doing the work. <laughs> Y'all deserve so much better and we're going to make sure that we're not just talking about it, but that we're going to be about it. And I wish that, you know, we could change everything overnight and all across the nation and the globe. But the reality is we all have to put in the work at our grassroots level. So that's what we're doing here in Vegas. Um, we have an election coming up really soon. So everyone is being encouraged to vote. Another really important thing to note is that um, Metro actually encourages communication and feedback so you can contact them via email, give them a call, leave any concerns or whatever and they are pretty receptive and open to that. I'll, I'll provide a lot of different um, resources as it pertains to local Las Vegas and uh, LVMPD in the community in the description box so if anyone is interested in looking more into that if you're considering moving here and you want to know what like the police situation police relations are like if that is a really big concern or something that's really important to you check out their website but then also a couple of these videos addressing the events that have happened in the past week or few days and i can't believe that it's only been a week oh <laughs> we got a lifetime of work left to do but Hopefully we're, I think that we are a lot farther. We've already made a lot of positive progress and strides by banding together as like a global community at this point. So let us not gas out y'all. Keep pushing, keep pressing in your own communities. We're doing it here in Vegas. And something else that I will do to help support the black community is I will leave a list of black owned businesses that you can support here in Las Vegas. I'll post it on my Instagram as well. Um, by the way, if you haven't followed me on Instagram yet, I have a little Vegas dedicated account at Sunshine Las Vegas. More updates on like what's been going on here in Vegas uh, to come because we just reopened yesterday, June 4th. If you want to stay more up to date on Vegas, by the way, if I'm being completely honest, I have so much on my plate with me having just started up my own business and everything. Um, I, I am still trying to figure out how to like manage and juggle all of this. But again, I this Las Vegas channel is something I'll be keeping up with for as long as I'm here, suckas. So... <laughs> I'll keep on uploading videos and answering questions to the best of my ability. But if you want to follow some like really, really, truly dedicated like full-time Las Vegas reports and accounts, I'll leave who I would recommend to follow in the description as well. So for those who are just curious, looking for more resources, insight, or just curious as to like what's going on and Vegas, like day to day, minute by minute, whatever. Uh, follow those accounts. Stay safe out there, y'all. Black Lives Matter. Take care and we'll talk again soon. Bye.